Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Legends Only. My name is T. Kyle. And I'm Bradley. And this is your weekly pop culture podcast where we talk about Legends Only. And welcome, everyone. You know, if you happen to hear anything in the background, <laughs> we're in the middle Hopefully of the club right now. <laughs> Hopefully you don't hear anything in the background because she is what? A producer. That's right. And she's an audio mixer and she's going to do her best. Exactly. In these <laughs> trying times, you know, it's straight pride this weekend, St. Patrick's Day. Mm-hmm. And to counteract that, apparently a group of LGBTs is yep. directly across the street. Literally right outside my window. Protesting <laughs> in the form of share remixes. <laughs> Is that what it was? It's Cher. I hear oh. believe. Oh my God. Should we go invite them over? Ask them if they're friends of the pod? Yeah. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up. We can't record to assholes. Literally, 10 minutes before pressing play, it was like, ooh, 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 ooh. I mean, they might drop your single. Then what? <gasps> oh my! Should I just open my window and scream? <laughs> <laughs> Stream Tracer <Trace> you! you! <laughs> and just keep screaming out the window. They might do it. Oh, man. Ugh. Well, you know, we make it work. We make do. Yep. Yeah, we certainly do. My audio skills are really coming in handy. I gotta yeah, say. you've chopped worse. <laughs> you've had crickets in Connecticut. That is true. That's a Lana title. <laughs> crickets in Connecticut. Editing out crickets in Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> I was really proud when I did that. Yeah. That was like scientific. It was, I had yeah. to find the like frequency. The, hurt, the frequency of the cricket <laughs> the and pinpoint the frequency and erase her. Mm-hmm. Wow. God. Well, maybe one day mm. I would win one of these awards that we're going to talk about. Uh, sure. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> you're like. You're like <laughs> I guess she wants to be in the movies you're now a too. You you're dream a lot, lot in your sleep. I love yes, your fantasy. You do. <laughs> Well, yes, you know, these aren't the Grammys, but they are the Oscars, you know. There's an Oscar for audio, right? Yes, yeah. audio editing. If you're not too busy being an EDM producer, you might want to just slip into, I don't know, the best original song category. Oh, watch out. Watch Gaga. out, Gaga. Watch <laughs> out, or Rihanna. Let's oh, my God. <laughs> Meanwhile, both knocked out. Yeah, <laughs> they were. <laughs> they were. Yes, we, as you know, we are a late breaking news podcast always on top of the the news as it drops so it's so disrespectful for these award shows to happen yeah when as we, we drop yeah mm-hmm. yes but we do of course have our discord where we have the live chats as these events are happening if mm-hmm. you'd like to join and yeah we had the oscars we had best original song performances from stephanie a late breaking performance you know we we haven't been able to talk about any of this yet did you watch I watched the clips. Okay. I didn't watch the show live. Okay. You know what I mean? Well, I did. And that... She sang. She... Hands were held. Did a reverse Warholian expedition from glam to local. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Joe Calderon. Joe Calderon. The Twitter account got active again as well. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. She's I actually thought this was interesting. The concept of deglamming or the overall performance or Yeah. And yeah. going and just being like raw in four K like that. Yeah. That takes you could bravery. see the cheeks were scrubbed. Like yeah. she was red cheek and raw to cheek. cheek to in 8K. rosy cheek. I gotta give her credit for that. I'm gonna give her Vaseline. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to be a little bit on the lip. <laughs> I can't say shit. We're not a video podcast for a reason. No, we aren't. No, no. It's just, yes. no, literally, the fact that she had to scrub her face because you can't just go from glam to nothing easily, especially the kind for red carpet, because she looked fantastic on the red carpet. I will say, high fashion editorial, that was giving Born This Way 2023. Mm-hmm. It was impeccable as she's like picking up the photographers falling at her feet, hold my hand promo live but then to scrub that off is not exactly an easy task you have to do at least two rounds of like cleanser (laughs) all that tati watching all that tati watching (laughs) yes you have to do like the oil i did see someone talking about the red lip they were like how did she get that red lip off that fast it's just i I guess i felt bad for the makeup artist too to immediately run back and be like "Ah, (laughs) what is she doing (laughs) stephanie no (laughs) the new jacqueline palette (laughs) But yeah, she uh, held our hands with a uh, Joanne-esque version of the song. A little monologue at the beginning. It's fine. I'm just glad the era's over, you know? Yeah. <laughs> is it? 
I don't I know. Hope. So there was something in her eyes, both on the red carpet and that performance that told me she's deep in method acting for Joker right now. There's something mm-hmm. very dark going on inside that mind. I'm scared. I know there'll be, we're going to get a story about her decision to do this in an, in like a year when she does these press junkets for Joker, she's going to be like, I got backstage and something came over me and I knew I had to just take it all off, just strip myself. Yeah. We're going to get a very dramatic retelling of this night for sure in a year. I'm ready for it. I'm same. Or, you know, she's going to feel that a ghost told her to do it. It's going to be something. <laughs> Uh, in any case, we also had Super Bowl performer Rihanna <gasps> dripping in Mother. diamonds. Mother. She slayed. She did. She absolutely did. You, when you got a Bobby knocking up against your diaphragm, too. Like, oh. that can't be easy to get those notes out. I mean, the baby was singing as well. Probably <laughs> carrying background vocals. I liked seeing this because it made me think that she still wants to do it. Yeah. Like, the Super Bowl, I was like, oh, Contractual Maybe it was, yeah. or something. But now I'm like, oh, she didn't have to do this. No. I'm so glad that's she cool. did. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a beautiful performance. It's exactly what I thought it would be, which is like orchestral focus on her. Mm-hmm. Didn't expect the baby, but you never know. But of course, they both lost. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> to RRR, <laughs> which the tweet that said Australian women singing the chorus of Beyonce single ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Because they both went, R, 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 R. <laughs> well. Well. But yeah, that, uh, that performance was fun as well. And of course, we had the Oscars. We also had the Oscars red carpet, the after parties, the watch parties. There was so much. There was too much. Um, there was the Vanity Fair after party. We had somebody on the red carpet. <laughs> This is the highlight of the Oscars. This is the highlight and the intentional light. What would you say? Half up, half down almost in a way? Mm-hmm. Half, <laughs> half smart, half dumb talks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Legendina herself was at the Vanity Fair party. There to claim the Legacy Award for Burlesque soundtrack, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. One day we'll get that. Now that it's storming the streaming charts on Netflix. Didn't it go in top 10 or it's something? It's top 10. Yeah, it's like on the main I, homepage. Finally. Some would say ahead of its time. Yeah. Um, if everyone would look back at everything <laughs> we've been saying and praying and preaching and praying and saying. Well, she is there. And let me tell you something about Legentina Gaudiolera. You give her a check to promote a product, she is going to do it. How many times has she talked about Nintendo? Like, yeah. unintentionally. Like, mm-hmm. nobody asked. Jesus. I love my Switch playing Mario I Party. Love just, you know, I'm kind of like, I'm a glam girl, but I do love being at home with my kids playing Nintendo. Like, sh- uh, just nobody asks. I believe it, though. Oh, for sure. I want to see Christina Aguilera play Fortnite. You know she's competitive. <sighs> oh, yeah. She's probably chewed you out. Yeah. And you didn't even know it. <laughs> Ate her up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she kills my character, which my name is Queen of Pop. Right. She's like, uh- <laughs> exactly not anymore left no crumbs left Say. no oreo crumbs on the table <laughs> i mean how how often did she talk about oreos you dip the cookie in the milk and it's just so good and she got dragged for the oreo promo too yes and she was ahead of her time and then some other italian woman mm-hmm. dunked hers in radioactive green and pink all of a sudden now we want to collect them well well it's hard being a pioneer <laughs> But she was on the red carpet giving an interviewer quite a scare, I would say. And before I go to any special big event, we wanted to make sure we did a, a proper beauty regimen. Okay. And that includes Zeman, a little bit of smart talks for, um, to treat frown lines when you're feeling tired. We want the expression, but we don't want to give, you know, too much away. I need to see the full wide shot of this. Yeah. Because... I am convinced that the reporter thought she said semen. Absolutely. There's no way she did it. Which we joked about last yes. week. We were like, it sounds like it. Yes. Someone's going to think it. And the second she says it, it's going to sound like it. Yes. And it did. It sure did. <laughs> and she was rattled. Like, Christina looked thrown off. Yes. Because I was thinking, like, you can't really say, oh, no, I didn't say that. I, I meant, like, it's with an X. Yeah. Because... 
it makes it worse. It's the the Zeman. It's the quick little Z. Well, if everyone would stop pronouncing X's that way, <laughs> then we wouldn't have this problem. It's so true. Xeomen is what it should be. Like Xavier's Zenas, Ducks Moy, <laughs> Xyl- Oh wait, I guess xylophone sounds like yeah. A- they're all culprits. Yeah, they're the problem. What else starts with X? Xanax. Oh, it, yeah. Oh, oh, I guess it's all well, a Lindsay. Z sound. Yeah. Why not just put a Z? I don't get it. Just call it Zeomen with a Z. You know, there's a. I, I'm probably. I'm guessing there's a reason that I haven't <laughs> researched into Zeomen. But yeah, this interviewer was like, "Oh, how do you? <laughs> how do you get ready for the night?" Okay. And that includes Zeman. A little bit of little smart, smart talks. talks. <laughs> I love her. I don't care. This a little like... Zeman all over your body. Who hasn't? Who hasn't? <laughs> oh, God, I love her. Keeps you young. I... <laughs> Zeman Tina has been slaying it already this era. <laughs> Zeman Tina. <laughs> so watch out for more red carpet appearances to come because I think she's got to promote it on every red carpet. I or she wait. is anyway. She's taken upon herself. She looks great. She does. Call it, maybe it's, maybe she's born with it. Yeah. Maybe it's semen. Same. Well, there was also the uh, Gaio Siri Oscars viewing party and or the Madonna party. She did some fierce, fo- they always do like a fierce like photo setup. She had a good one where she was like arching back with like hands below her. These were awesome. They are so cool. And you it's know, she's cool just- how they do it in real time there yes. like they're kind of cutting up the photos mm-hmm. and playing around it's not like a photo booth where you just walk in and pose oh yeah it's, it's like a full photo shoot yeah and you know she didn't watch the oscars she just stood in that room and took poses until she got it right there's no way who's the photographer of these um oh his name is uh it's like jr but it's i saw the behind the scenes videos of madonna like on the thrashing her hair yeah. back and forth yeah, I his name is And the Billy one where they Yeah, JR just sliced it down. Yes, the Billy one was so cool. I love that there's like hands, there's clouds. Of course, some legends were there. Rita Ora was in attendance. X-rated beat dancer. X-rated beat dancer. I wonder if they played your song while they posed. <laughs> you never know to get her in the mood. Keep on serving con- A lot of people were serving Cavant at the Oscars. Can I also just say, I've had to explain that song to at least a coworker and a friend, a, a straight ally. Well, I don't know if you can call them an ally if they don't know what it means, but a lot of people are coming across your remix and the many layers of it are lost on them. Got it. So not only is that phrase lost on them, but also that it's Countess Luann and why is Rita Ora dancing to it? It's and like, why is it a beat? Why is it a beat? Yeah. Like, <laughs> really, if you go down that wormhole, it's like, I don't know where to None begin. None of it makes sense. No, which no. is why it's so great. Yes. If you get it, you get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's when you really take a step back, you're like, and you observe it as like a straight person, it must be. Just mind boggling. Straight colored glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put on your St. Patrick's Day glasses. Oh, no, please don't. <laughs> oh, My God. tweet about St. Patrick's Day always resurfaces every year. Oh, yes. 10 years ago, the date on that. Oh. 2013, simpler times. A hit tweet. It still holds up, I gotta say. Why don't you read it for the class? Or you have it by memorized I, by I heart? I honestly think I have it memorized, but I will just. St. Patrick's Day is a holiday where everyone who peaked in high school puts on their best (laughs) North Face and just yells. It's still true. It really is true. I will say, uh, knock on carpet, uh, (laughs) that I haven't encountered as much aggro behavior this year. Oh. It's been a little quiet. On my way home last night, it was just madness. I was like, I need to go. Well, I was in last night, so then I guess I don't have any excuse. I don't know. I saw bagpipers and um, Irish dancers. Oh, yeah. I was at the dog museum. Oh, <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you this. Yes. I went to the dog museum, which is surprisingly very close to my home. Didn't know it existed. It's like two floors of uh, dog statues and photos. And on Friday evenings, you can bring your dog. I don't have one, was- <laughs> but my friend does. So we went and there were all these little dogs in St. Patrick's Day outfits running around yelling you know barking at each other that's kind of cute it was very cute 
uh, we sat next to an overexcited pug who was just like, (laughs) 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 it was a good time. They do a little scavenger hunt, whole nine yards. Yeah. So check it out. Dog Museum. Museum of the Dog. Not (laughs) sponsored. Not sponsored. We should be sponsored by Chewy. (laughs) (laughs) Z-Men. We are close to that sponsorship. Oh my God. Imagine that's like our first video podcast. It's like (laughs) Z-Men. Sponsored by (laughs) Z-Men. And I just, my face doesn't move the whole time. (laughs) Oh my god. Anyway. Anyway. Back to the Oscars. Back to the Oscars. Quick shout out to the actual Oscars. Shout out to everything, everywhere, all at once. Winning everything. Sweeping. I mean, such emotional speeches. I'm so proud of everyone involved in that movie. It's also the only Oscars movie nominated that I watched, so I'm a little biased, but I fucking loved it. We love. Highly recommend it. One day you will get there. I, yeah, I flopped on that one. It's okay. I told myself I was going to watch it for the Oscars, <laughs> and then it was like, Oscars this week, and I was like, what? Well, you can watch it soon. We'll add it to the list. Yeah. We also had red carpet interviews. Ashley Graham had a this moment. This seemed like it was one of the more talked about yeah. moments, and I was like, why? I agree was that people that... were reaching. Yeah, it was a little... She was interviewing Hugh Grant. Yeah. And he was like a little... British. Yeah, and it was just whatever. It, wasn't, it was whatever. Yeah, he was not like he, anything crazy happened. No. But I felt like my feed on Twitter and everything was all about this. Yeah. I definitely think people were reaching for like some sort of drama or yeah. something. You're going to get your awkward, more awkward red carpet interviews. People aren't necessarily always... Sometimes they fuck with you. Yeah. Sometimes they're going to give you nooch, you know, on purpose. It also feels like this award show season is the first where the crowd is really back. Like it's packed and full and red carpets are back and there's no like... Zeman all over the carpet. (laughs) All (laughs) over the carpet. (laughs) And so I feel like people are really scavenging for these little snippets of... Oh, she was shading her. Right. Oh my God, her eyes rolled back and it's like, no, she probably just sneezed. You right. Know, like it's, we're really reaching. Yeah. And this was a weird reach. It was. Also, I love Ashley Graham. So I'm like. I know, I remember that about you. Yeah. Her post. Graham stan. That, yeah, I'm literally a Graham stan. Her post Graham that crackers, she did. Rise up. Oh my God, <laughs> little Ashley Graham crackers. <laughs> Yeah, I just really like her a lot and her body positivity messaging mm-hmm. and how she posts unretouched photos of herself. Yeah. I think it's very real. Yeah. And she's really hot. She is really hot. Yeah. Yeah. So we stand. We do stand. They, yeah, people people wanted the drama. Yeah. Well, you got it. You also got Jimmy Kimmel truly, and I guess this was probably the intention, just like burying the Will Smith slap jokes into the like into the ground just like oh. there were probably six or seven really total. yeah can you believe that was a year ago I can't what's going on time yeah goes by so slowly for those who wait <laughs> <laughs> not slow enough no I guess not yeah. I know wasn't the only award show happening the past week we also went up north. We're traveling up north. Bundle up, everyone. Overseas places. Overseas like places Canada. like Canada to the Juno Awards. If you get it, you get it. Yes. Shout out, first of all, friend of the pod and guest of the pod, Rev, won and performed. Ooh. And did like a fierce performance. I loved it. Control, alt, delete, bitch. <gasps> yeah. So work. Shout out to Rev. And, uh, you know, the night almost went off without a hitch. <laughs> Tits out, okay? <laughs> Tits out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Avril got interrupted by a streaker with her tits out. Tits out. Who? Somebody tweeted, BB Rex says, lost it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best tweet. It's literally this girl with her tits out, like, on the stage. <laughs> From far away, they're just like, BB Rex has BB Rex has lost it. <laughs> Slay! More on her in a moment. But... Moves out and everything. Moves out and everything. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like she would do this. It's very and much... And I would love it. She's a culprit. <laughs> and grabs the mic from Avril. She, yes. This song is number one. We're just start the rumor that was her. It, it, we, it's, it could be. She would do it and we would support it. She absolutely... 
Didn't Avril like rip the girl's pasties off though? I don't know if she ripped the pasties off. It looked off. like she ripped her pasties off. I did love this from Avril though. Yeah. Like, I thought she was going to fight her. It does remind you that she is a rock girl. She likes to rock out. Yeah. She said, nobody come out this time or the Canadian would come up out in me and I'll fuck a bitch up. She would. She, it was like a little reminder. Because at that point, wouldn't you be able to say that it was like a security breach? Like a, It was. Yeah. You never want somebody on stage that's really scary. They took a really long time with that. They did. That she guy was walking up real slow. up those stairs. <laughs> I like, guess there's a part of, well, no, the security should know. But like there's a part of you when that thing happens where you're like, is this part of the show? And everyone kind of is like, mm. right. And you do have Lil Mama, for instance. Oh, my God. I was in the pit for that. <laughs> you were. I you were in the I bum rushed the stage just like Lil, Lil Mama during Green Day's performance. You were actually in that performance. I was. <laughs> I I was one of the people that bum rushed onto the stage. And when I tell you that thing was rocking, oh, it was like swaying like this. Oh no! And I was like, oh, are you on camera? Probably. Yeah, I climbed oh, wow. right in the middle. Oh my god! The whole pit just like rushed up, and oh, we were god. climbing on speakers, and so we're like, yeah. <laughs> So I go up there and I'm just like, the guy's screaming. He's like literally pulling people off the stage. He's like, it's going to break. It's going to oh, break. God. I'm so sorry to all those people because now I feel bad because like I work yeah. in production. But like, <laughs> whatever. I was a little college kid. Leaving yeah, you were young and rebellious. A little stan. Exactly. A little Green Day stan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we had, yeah, she said it at the very end. She, she's like, get the fuck off, bitch. She yeah. spilled. She spilled. Not during Avril's little speech you won't no Mm -mm. here's to never getting your tits out (laughs) (laughs) honestly at first i thought it was promo for your single i was like oh there she goes oh (laughs) (laughs) no that was left off the marketing plan this year (laughs) not yet not yet well speaking of the most likely culprit (laughs) for who that was (laughs) bb is here The album announcement, Mm -hmm. which came a little prematurely. Oh. Because I guess, I think it was ATRL. I think that was the screenshot of the album title and cover leak. Gotcha. That was what she used for the TikTok. Yeah. Yes, she posted a TikTok saying, well, here it is, because somebody leaked it early. You know what? Uh, It's a slay, so she doesn't need to worry about anything. Coming out in April, the album is called BB. I'm obsessed with this cover. I'm obsessed with the cover. Somebody it's said so good. Somebody said in the zone vibes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like in the zone meets And tits out all night. Barbarella. Yes. A little sable wig, kind of like Ooh. you know what I'm yeah. Yeah. It's giving glam. It is I like that glam. she shortened the BB and it's like super cute in the yeah. corner. It's simple. I, I love, love it. it. I'm obsessed with the fact that she had said that she was going back and forth between titles. And in the end it's BB. I love it. I think it's smart too, especially for her third album Mm -hmm. in the wake of I'm Good, which is still dominating the charts. Right. Let them know your name. Right. BB. What about BB? (laughs) That it implies it's her most personal work to date, you know? Maybe. BB Jean. BB Jean. BB Jean incoming. (laughs) She also acknowledged someone tweeting about one of the songs. Oh. The song we hyped up last yes. week. Yes, she did. Because she did an interview. And so someone tweeted her and was like, release Call On call me. me. And she was like, how did you find out about that song? I would just like to say it was not me. No. Didn't she play it on a recording? Like, isn't it an interview? I think so. Yeah. She she like does. They like played part of it. Yeah. But she tweeted and was like, how did you find out about this? I'm like, <laughs> like the interview you, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, we don't want to overhype on this pod, but let's just say. I was bopping to it. We were bopping. Fans of Sacrifice will be very happy. Yeah. Well, speaking of BBs. From BB to baby. To Bobby. Bobby. Lindsay. (laughs) That all rhymes. (laughs) I'm back. She's back. And pregnant. Mm -hmm. She's not the only one who's back. Mm -mm. (laughs) Little Bobby Lohan. Bobby Lohan incoming. Incoming. Yes. Lindsay Lohan is pregnant. And our hopes for LL3 just diminished a little more. Yeah. That's okay, though. She's a mother. R9. This is a potential mother. Yes. We're never getting them. Never getting any. The queens of pop are having babies. (laughs) They're having makeup lines and babies. And that's that. 
Well, I'm very happy for her. She looks fabulous. She's glowing. She's a mother. She really is glowing. Mother. Very excited for her journey and her continued low renaissance. I'm assuming the acting continues. Mm-hmm. And uh, who knows if she wants to throw us a bone and give us a bop once every five years. I don't know. She really missed out by not releasing Xanax. <sighs> Because, I mean, we can get into it later. We will, yes. But like, yeah. Better Off Alone is really having a moment. Yeah. Again and again. We'll discuss later on in new music. We will. Yeah, Yeah, well, from B being to... (laughs) Back to (laughs) Z-Men. Back to (laughs) (laughs) Z-Men. We have a rare moment for a man on this pod. We do. An ally. Well, <laughs> <laughs> really, this is this is true allyship, in my opinion. Yeah, this is the standard that all straight men should have. <laughs> God, <laughs> Diplo went on a pod and talked. Oh, Emily Ratoshkowski's podcast mm-hmm. and talked about his sexual exploits and orientation and said, "I'm not not gay." And talked about how, uh, you know, men, women, maybe, have orally pleasured. <laughs> it's giving, it's giving share. <laughs> the flavor. Let's call it like it is. First of all, shout out to Diplo for at least being honest. Because I feel like this is so common for rock stars, DJ, superstars, whatever. They're having orgies. They're partying. They're doing whatever. I'm not surprised that things have fallen into mouths <laughs> along the way. I, I'm i very unsurprised by this. I feel like a lot of rock stars have crazy stories about exploits on the road. This doesn't shock me at all. And he's always been very much an ally in many ways and cool with the gays and not not gay. Yeah, your cover story that you did with him. I did, yes. I did a cover story. He was half in drag for that. He's just always been super chill. I mean, he had Pablo Vitar. He collaborated with, like, I don't know. He's always really been down. So this uh, this does not surprise me. I know the girls were guessing on social media. Like, it could just be one person. Hmm. In my opinion, I feel like it's... Not just one person, first of all. I, I feel like he was just being vaguely like... It happens. I feel like he has orgies or whatever, sex parties, and things have happened. I feel like it's not like one person got a lucky shot. I don't yeah. know. You know? So, whatever. And half of your straight male faves probably have in, in the industry, too. They're just less forthcoming. True. About it. They're having Zeman parties, too. <laughs> <laughs> Different kind of z men A little different kind of z And that includes z men Some smart talks. Yeah. Also, people found some post that he did. I guess he was like on a private plane or whatever, and there was turbulence. And he thought he was going to go down. <laughs> so he wrote a post and in it and was like, oh, and by the way, I might be gay. Yeah. He's also said and on the deleted pod. deleted it. He said on the pod that he could see there's certain guys he could see having lifelong relationships with or something to that effect. Wow. I think he's vaguely on the sexual spectrum somewhere. And I really appreciate a quote unquote straight guy just being chill with that. Secure, confident. Secure, confident. Maybe I maybe I could be, maybe, you know. It's like me when I went to that strip club. Yeah. <laughs> Tits you know in my face. Tits out. Puss out. <laughs> throwing dollar bills. Puss in my face. It's like when Rihanna uploads photos from the Savage X Fenty fashion show and you go sliding down the Kinsey scale a bit where you're like, wait a minute, maybe I could. So, whatever. I uh, applaud him. We embrace it all. We applaud, applaud, applaud. And I know plenty of men are are, uh, happily in his DMs right now. Like, oh, I'll be the other. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, because everyone was saying how he... He said he, like, didn't He didn't know who it was. Yeah, he didn't look. He couldn't remember. And it's like, how embarrassing for you that you clearly weren't... (laughs) You're... you're, uh, Call me, you won't forget. Gawk... (laughs) Gawk gawk game was unremarkable. And then, of course, he responded in a TikTok because... Oh, that was fucking funny. One of many memes was, like, Diplo when the twink looks at him in the yeah. eye. <laughs> it's just his reaction looking at it. Um, You know what? Relatable. Yeah. I was a little turned on by this. Well, I think it's really hot when any guy is comfortable in their sexuality. 
to just say what they really get into and whatever. Yeah. So shout out to Diplo. A rare uh, men applaud moment on this pod. <laughs> it does not happen often. No. no. No, it does not. No. Well. Some people were also thinking that it was Orville Peck. Oh. Because there's a lot of photos of them, like, very close. I and... could, uh, yeah. They definitely have collabed. Yeah. Who knows? And then you do have I that, would ship it. You have that mask. <laughs> Makes it easier. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, that's true. But he's sort of been doing, Orville's been doing a bit of a face reveal. Right. Recently. Yeah. The Drag Race look was very revealing. It was. I was like, oh. Yeah, she's teasing. New era. Yeah. Yeah, I'll giving you a little more each time. The fringe is gone. Because I do feel like that would be frustrating at a certain point. Oh, to sing with like fringe? And to just only be a non-pop star. Like, well, I don't know. I, I don't actually know. I don't know the full cool look. Yeah. We had Orville's mask on the Drag Race runway. Speaking of runways. Did you watch this episode? I watched clips on TikTok and the pit stop, which I think is sufficient. Yeah. I'm, I'm behind again. Yeah. I had a day yesterday. Oh. I get a pass. So. Yeah. Same. Me and the dogs. Yeah. So. <laughs> I know the gist of what happens. I saw, you know, lip sync, elimination, the iconic who should go home segment I saw. Oh, that was really good. That yet. That's really good. The top three remains the top three. Yeah, it does. We're getting to the end. And uh, some people need to let loose. Oh, my God. <laughs> that started going viral this week, too. And Lucy I'm living Duca. for it. I, the girls have been running literally with it. The drag queens have this, it's almost a challenge at this point where you just walk through a hallway to let loose. <laughs> you like lip to it. Very entertaining. It's really funny. I think she has a good sense of humor about it too. Yeah. yeah. And it's even funnier that she has no sense of humor about it on the show. Because she's yes. st- taking herself so seriously. <laughs> uh, so I'm living for that. And also like, it's really catchy. It is. And it's <laughs> funny because I didn't even really notice it when it first happened on yeah. the premiere. Because you're just meeting everyone. But now that we've gotten to know Lucy on the show uh-huh. and she's taking it very seriously and getting emotional. It's so funny to have a song called, called Let, Let Loose. Loose. <laughs> but I think, yeah, like we said, she is having fun with it. So yeah. I'm enjoying. But yeah, it is really catchy. It is. I listened to it today at the gym because I was like, I saw that people were going increasingly viral with it. And I'm, I was like, let me listen to the actual song. And I'm like, this is fun. Yeah. While we've been getting loose on the drag race runway, maybe it's time to take it to uh, the other <laughs> runways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let loose. Let loose. <laughs> High fashion. Oh, so editorial. Guys, this is awesome. This is a billboard. This is super high fashion. Oh my God, that's so high fashion. So high fashion. Okay, so my first pick is Troy Savon at the Oscars. Oh, we're going back to the Oscars runway. Yeah. The red carpet. Mm-hmm. Mm. I just really liked this look. Work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, not a whole lot that I've seen. Uh, you know who was there? Who? She wasn't too tired to go attend this. <gasps> she was. Miss Hilary Duff and yeah. Matthew Coma were in attendance. Yep. Funny how that works. Mm. Mm. She's tired. <laughs> I know. Well. well, she's an actress now. She is an actress. So it makes sense. Yeah, she's not too tired for that. No. It does check out. Yeah. Yeah, there were a lot of people at the Vanity Fair party. A lot. I know. I'm trying to think of others that stood out. I really like Troy Savans because like, I would want to wear that. Right. Well, you know, you can always go to check the tag not sponsor to see all the looks. But Yeah. Oh, you know who was there also it was your boy. Joe Jonas. Yeah. He was there in sort of like a sort of like a smoker's jacket, relaxed moment. Yeah. They're having quite the moment on Broadway, right I by know. you. Right down the street. They've been filming things and like Yeah. I didn't get tickets, but I think you need to just stalk outside. I'm grown. Well, I don't are there are I've done things. that before. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see the one TikTok of them just walking by on the street? Oh yeah, yeah. The girl was, was like, just oh, eating. <laughs> Yeah, I know where that is. It's it, yeah, yeah, it's literally right there. Right there. Mm-hmm. Us at moms being like, oh, yeah, Joe, <laughs> Joe, <laughs> in front of my truly, in front of my waiter. <laughs> yeah, this was cool. I wish I could have gone, but obviously, very limited engagement. I hope they filmed this. Mm-hmm. 
because that would be a cool special. I definitely think they did. Because obviously Broadway tickets are a much smaller venue than Madison Square Garden. Yeah. But um, I did try to go to Lion's Vines Trying Times. Oh. And unfortunately, it was a trying time. It was a trying time. (laughs) You waited in line. Yeah. It was a trying time. It's honestly, it's okay. It is okay. Because before the pandemic, I went and saw that one tour, and I was front row, and I was living. Agreed. I would also like to give a shout out back to the Vanity Fair Oscars red carpet to Megan Thee Stallion, who (gasps) absolutely turned it out. Yeah. She also, I loved her response. They were like, are you working on music? And she's like, I got a new album out. Fuck (laughs) y'all. She like was very blunt. I loved it. Um, deservedly so for all the shit that she's gone through in the past few years. So I enjoyed that a lot. And Billy looked good too. Mm-hmm. But honestly, none of these girls, <laughs> they can keep trying, but they're never going to keep up with the new fashion queen on the scene. No, they're not. The new Mark Jacobs model. Of course, we're talking about Megan. M. Thregan. M. Thregan stuns for Heaven by Mark Jacobs wearing like a hoodie and shorts. I am obsessed with the shoes. And the knee-high boots. Yeah. She's very on trend. She is. She looks cool, modern. <laughs> She's eating. She's eating. <laughs> she is turned on. She is not <laughs> off. <laughs> Pose activated. Pose activated. Slay initiated. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, I would be scared if I were Olivia Rodrigo because <laughs> she definitely looks uh, like. Oh my God, honestly, literally, this is like Olivia Rodrigo would wear this. <laughs> Olivia Rodrigo. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. (laughs) (laughs) I can't. We (laughs) drivers L one (laughs) since. Yeah, the girls should be scared. They should be in multiple ways. They actually should be for their lives. Yeah, for their careers and their lives. (laughs) Your look, your voice. Uh, well, you know, we also have plenty to discuss on social media and beyond in a little segment that we like to call TikTok, TikTok Talk. Talk. Well, it's the crossover of a century. This is another crossover I did not see coming. Gigi Gorgeous, star of the avenue. We all know why we're gathered here today. We all know why we're gathered here. <laughs> I actually desperately looked for some semblance of like the Avenue proof of existence online the other day. I found season two trailer. The trailer is on. Yes. And there is another one of the accounts that has everything privated (sighs) from season one, I think. And I'm not posting it because I don't want them to know that I know. Yeah. Okay. Well, Gigi Gorgeous attended an event where Sarah Michelle Gellar was also in attendance and they did this photo booth moment it's giving Slay Me Buffy, the Buffy Avenue crossover that honestly is so niche and important to me. It's very Rita Ora singing, serving Cavant. It really is. The girls are listening and we're manifesting. Honestly, there is a Buffy songs happening right now. There I is. see so many tweets about it now. I don't want to say I inspired. I think you did. I think I did. I'm saying it. Uh, well... I absolutely adore this. I love that SMG is having like a total moment right now with her new show and all the interviews she's doing about Buffy and beyond. And it's been gorgeous. She looks gorgeous. High fashion. Gigi slaying as always. Always. (laughs) Rachel still follows me. Oh. Yeah. Well, she follows as well. Yes, that's true. No, I'm glad that she's Rachel gotten better since season two. (laughs) Yes, loved seeing that. We should have Rachel on to talk about the avenue. We absolutely should. She's gonna be like, "Can you please stop talking about this?" (laughs) Yeah, literally. Seven people saw this, and you keep bringing it up. Uh, Yeah, I'm like, (laughs) I made gifts of it. Watch the season two trailer that is available online, and you'll get it. Yeah. Uh, Well, that wasn't the only thing dominating our feed in the past 48 hours. No, I can say both you and I are deep into eras TikTok. And I didn't ask to be on this side of TikTok, but I have no choice. No, it was forced upon us. Yeah. I've seen 
behind the scenes getting into the arena. I've seen the merch line. I've seen the show itself, of course. We're talking about the Eras Tour kickoff in Arizona. Arizona. Is that on purpose? I don't think so, but there's always a meaning with her. Yeah. <laughs> it's possible. Didn't they say it was like Taylor Swift City or something? Yeah, it they was... named it Swift City oh. for a day or two. And I saw so many of the comments be like, does that mean if my baby's born that day, she's born in Swift City, Arizona? She should be. She should be. <laughs> and name that baby Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> Get a good lawyer. <laughs> Yes, uh, this was unavoidable for me for work purposes, but also just in general, my FYP was covered in it. The funny part was it started with people camping outside the arena and yeah. it was like muffled yes, songs. I Very much covering, like what we're dealing with right now. Yes. With the rager. The Eras Tour sound check happening outside <laughs> your window. She's here already. The traces of you release party sound check <laughs> happening outside. Yes. Um, for the past two weeks she had been rehearsing in the stadium and sound checking and honestly i'm pretty sure every song she sound checked did make the final set list Mm -hmm. because everything in her discography made the set list she performed 44 songs yeah in a over three hour long set in the first night of era's tour incredibly impressive however i just have to wonder and she is singing live how long are you going to be able to last doing a three hour set, 44 songs in this before your voice gives out? Like, oh, I actually think she's lipping a lot of it. Do you think? Yeah, you can see it in the videos. Like, I actually hope she is because there's no way you're going to do a three hour show every yeah. night for months. Oh, and I'm not saying that to be like rude. I'm just no. because everyone does it. Yeah. But for her sake, she should be. Yeah. It's fine to pass the mic to the audience. There's plenty of Swifties who will handle some of those high notes because. All of our girls start falling off vocally like pretty soon into it because it's just a lot of... Yeah. It's a lot. So 44 songs? That's crazy. And she's not really meddling it at all. No. Three I hours. did like the one... I Because I let me tell you, I've, I've been deep on Era's tour TikTok. Same, my same. whole feed. The transition into Look What You Made Me Do was really cool. Ooh, yeah. The way that they... Yeah. She threw everyone it. off with that opening, I will say. Miss Americana as the opening mm-hmm. is like... That's everyone was like, oh, she's going to do mid- Midnight Rain or Lavender Haze or It's Me High, like something. Right. There were a lot of better ideas on TikTok <laughs> that were like, of course, like saying like It's Me High and she comes up would have been exciting or like Meet Me at Midnight and she comes up. Honestly, the Swifties probably screwed themselves by yeah. giving away all the good ideas. Honestly. Because you know she's scrolling. Yeah. So she's like, well, can't do that. Can't do that. She wants to surprise everyone. Yes. And she did. She did. She's like, er- here's a random lover like, song. Yeah. Everyone was like, wait a minute. What? Yes. I agree with that. I also feel her choices were really interesting. She starts off. She does eras because the concept is eras tour. So she goes through all her eras, except <laughs> She starts off with Lover. She does like five Lover. She does one Speak Now song and then one debut song she did at the piano only. And I find that interesting given that she hasn't done her Taylor's versions of those yet. So she's like, you're not getting coin from me performing a lot of those songs right now. She didn't do any of a lot of the albums she hasn't recorded yet. I was like, I see what you're doing. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean... There's like some imbalances in general with it, but I thought that was very interesting. She's doing a lot for the locals. There's a lot of Shake It Off, Love Story. It is a hits tour. I'm not necessarily surprised, but you know, it looks good. Looks great. I will give her props because I think, you know, with all the drama about the ticket sales and the pricing Mm -hmm. and how expensive these are, I will give her props. The fact that there's two openers and... The fans yep. say that she goes on at 8 and she ends at 11.15. And it's Paramore. Like, that's incredible yeah. in Arizona. So. I give her credit for giving the girls a show. Yeah, that I will say. That is a solid, like, yeah. five, six hours of entertainment. Yes. And, you know, we can talk about the staging and all that stuff, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, so yeah. I got to give it up to the team because you guys know I'm not a Swifty. Right. But. <laughs> and they're coming for you. No, you're right. I will give her credit. Like, a three-hour fucking set is is a lot yeah and so i'm sure the swifties are being fed i also loved she started into the evermore set did you see that part she's like this is we're midway through the evermore era which 
is an album I love, despite <laughs> what many of you on TikTok think. <laughs> Cleared. Cleared them. Uh, and then, of course, we had Bejeweled from yeah. the Nights. Our little sweetie, Michael. Shout yeah, out to she Michael did the Bejeweled Ariano. dance on stage with the dancers. The little, did like, the shimmer and the turn. Shimmer. I know that child is not sleeping because of that. It was also cool hearing the crowd reaction. Yes. Because it's like, that's, I don't know, I, I love that. Yes, for those who didn't know, there's a very, very viral Bejeweled dance where you just sort of strut, turn, and shimmer your fingers. Mm-hmm. And everyone commented for months, like, Taylor needs to see this and do it at tour. And she did. Yeah. So she's very online. She knows. Yeah, she does. She knows. At one point, she dove into the stage, which was insane. I need a how we did this moment because it's so out of nowhere diving head first. Yes. I saw like a far away angle and I was like, okay, cool. Cause like, I thought she just like belly flopped, you know, like just jumped and belly flopped onto like a mattress or something. Yeah. But then if you look, there's a, there's one video from someone who's in the pit area. Yeah. So you just kind of see her, like her neck is like tucked down. And as a former lifeguard, <laughs> I was like, <gasps> Yeah. It's so out of nowhere. Yeah. So essentially what happens is like there's this huge runway on the stage. I'm sure you guys have seen this, but if you haven't, there's an opening and she dives into it. Mm -hmm. And then the stage is all a screen and it's all water and it looks like a pool and like her body is swimming under the water. It's very cool. It goes all the way up to the stage and then this wave hits. It's actually kind of a slide. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I got to give her credit. Got to give her credit. And yeah, she closes with karma. In a giant, like, uh, rainbow display. Everything's real gay at that moment. And, yeah, she really she really did that for the Swifties, I think. I think everyone's going to have their grumbling. I've seen from stands who are like, I can't believe she didn't do Getaway Car or whatever. It's like, okay. But it's not a 40- bad problem to have, though. It's not. 44 songs is like, okay. You, yeah. You, you had to like some of that. It's going to be the same with Madonna. Like, when she does oh, Celebration yeah, I'm be so Tour. Annoying. Like, the hits to you are not the hits to me. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm going to be so outraged at everything. Listen, you know. Well, you know what? I'll have reason to be mad because they're going to be TikTok remixes of all the hits and I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm preparing in advance. I do also want to say on the Eras tour, the intro was giving Britney Spears performing at the Grammys. Oh. With the little fans and they're all like From fluttering the down. Of my broken... Yep. And then they all flutter mm-hmm. little fans down and they lift them up and then they reveal Britney laying there. Well. Inspired, inspired some may say some may say get a good lawyer <laughs> which yes. i don't know if that was the inspiration but i'm gonna pretend like it was you definitely. and so i stand anyone who pays homage to uh-huh. my queen so yeah and she was also paying homage to another queen do you know what the last song that plays is before she goes on stage no Applaud, applaud, applaud. Really? She plays Lady Gaga's applause before she gets on stage. Is that a um, set thing where like it's a thing in the Swifty fandom that like she has a set list before? I think so. I think most artists do like there's like a song that you know is about the lights are about to go down oh. a lot of the time. I think with Taylor, yes. And there's always a reason. She plays Selena. She plays Ethel Kane, Lana. And then it ends with that song. And she actually was on an interview or Gaga wasn't confirmed that like Taylor's a big applause fan or art pop fan. So her hype song. It's her hype song. Wow. So little monsters pause up <laughs> <laughs> and get to the venue many hours before the show. Apparently it's packed. The merch lines were hours long oh but the cool thing about i will you got to give it up to this community the swifties people are showing up in all their eras outfits and they're doing basically plur edm culture they're they're doing friendship bracelet trading on the in the seats for like the hours before and you're meeting people it's really cute i gotta give it up to them they really are eating so good oh well fed this is gonna be filmed yeah yeah and that stage is like three miles long it's huge it's huge wasn't that just where the super bowl was that arizona stadium oh maybe yeah probably it is a big fucking catwalk yeah she got the snake outfit reputation red she does that does that homage to 22 the shirt the hat it's all there 
I feel like this was also a moment like, scrolling through where I was like, oh, Beyonce's soon. Madonna soon. Like, I know. We're going to start seeing videos of like these massive. Yeah. I mean, people have still been touring, but I don't know. Something about it felt. The giants. Are, yeah. Like, coming. Like, yeah. Something made my bank account hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. But again, like you said, I, at least she's not shortchanging people no. in terms of production and set list and stuff like comprehensive tour. Yeah. I also liked her shouting out the dancers and the crew and. Oh yeah. Swifties. We're happy for you. This is a big moment. I'm also grateful that, you know, can you imagine being there and being like, Oh my God, I have to pee. It's three hours. You can go five times. No. If you can find a bathroom, I guess. I'll be watching from HBO Max or wherever it yeah. streams. But I'm just, yeah. We've also speaking got... Speaking of singers. Speaking of singers and legends. And dolls. Mm-hmm. This doll is not killing people. Yes. Like m 3 Gin <laughs> That we know of. <laughs> yeah. But Jasper the doll has been taking TikTok by storm. Sure has. Some would say you're doppelganger. Yeah, I, some people have thought that some of them were me. Yep. And I was like, no, it's not. Like, I would really, I would own it. Heavily inspired by your work, some would say. (laughs) It is the funniest thing I've seen on the internet in a very long time. It's very you. It's very me. And Jasper just did a rendition of Lana Del Rey's Blue Jeans. Blue Jeans. (laughs) Blue Jeans. Blue Jeans. White shirt. Walking to the room. I have not laughed this hard in weeks. <laughs> it's lovely. Yeah, Jasper is your new queen of pop, yep. to be honest. Jasper followed me on TikTok. That's the ultimate endorsement. I am a little shook. I don't I... know what this means. Oh, I don't know either. I hope a remix is coming. I You well, would drop everything. It literally. <laughs> so when she did the Lana one, <laughs> yeah. because I think the voice is the same girl who goes back and forth. It's like kind of like a ventriloquist. Okay. I think. Yeah. I don't know. It's very advanced technology happening in this. But when Jasper wants to drop an EDM bop, I might have to send a DM. I think I will send a DM, actually. I definitely think you should. Be like, hey, if you come up with something funny and you want me to throw a four on the floor beat. Your arsenal of talent that you've remixed, Countess Luann... This is a place for legends, okay? (laughs) Blue jeans, jeans. (gasps) No, it's right there. Wait, what if she did Summertime Sadness, but it was Jasper singing Lana Del Rey's Summertime Sadness, but the dance bop that Lana hated at first. Yes, I... I've got that summertime. (laughs) (laughs) I can see this happening for you. I know where your your night's going to (laughs) go. Stay tuned. Who knows? Stay tuned. Also on TikTok. <laughs> now, have you seen this? Flop Tropica. Flop Tropica. It's uh, Chromatica's sister planet. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I've been seeing Flop Tropica for a while on yeah. my TikTok, and I wasn't really fully understanding it. Same. And then I did a little bit of a deep dive, yep. and it was kind of sending me, and it's basically a world of <laughs> meme. Yes. And there is a website. Oh. Have you seen this? No. So oh, the there's... Nation of Flop Tropica. Yes. Easy breezy beautiful. <laughs> and because I like did some deep diving now, I just can't I like see memes differently now. So basically this is like a how would we even describe it? 
it's a world. This it's is, a multiverse of madness. I was going to say this is kind of like explaining um, metaverse. Yeah, it's a metaverse. It's, it's a metaverse of meme. Mm-hmm. So the president is Deborah Ali Williams. The woman, if you've ever encountered her, who does the funeral services on yes. TikTok in a very elegant and traditional way. Yep. Look at her comment sections. They're always see. They're just like, like, we love president. our president. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. <laughs> Did you see that she just stepped into the booth? Yeah. <laughs> She's recording a song. Yeah. She's in on it, which yeah. I love. And her official title is President of United Flops since 2023. We love. Mm-hmm. Wendy Williams is the chief of staff. <laughs> Perfect. Which we love. And then there's this girl. I don't know how to pronounce this. I don't want to get canceled. Secretary. Oh, the very, she's okay, the girl so she's the like, very skinny girl who like walks sideways. Yeah, she's like the skinny legend who would walk sideways through things. Yes. And <laughs> she is the Secretary of Transportation. That makes sense. Trisha Paytas is the Secretary of Defense. <laughs> and then Britt Barbie is the Secretary of Education. So essentially all these memes have been labeled with like job titles. Government titles, got it. Yeah, this is this is some deep deep references and stand culture. It's really deep. There's um places to visit <laughs> such as Flop Donald's, <laughs> which is McDonald's and in Flop Tropica, it's owned by Nicki Minaj, the Flop Donalds franchise. There's <laughs> Brit Barbie's rap classes. Oh, is that because Onika Burgers? Yeah. There we go. There's all these like weird connections. Can you imagine playing any of this audio to a Victorian child right no. now? No. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. You can fly to Flop Tropica via the Trisha Paytas International <laughs> Airport Services, located in Upper Flop Tropica. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm going to post this on Discord and you guys can like... Um, Move to yeah. Floptronic. But it's sort of like made its way through TikTok in the sense that mashups are now like national theme songs uh-huh. and like, oh, this this should be the national anthem. Yep. So yeah, if you see more of uh, Flop Tropica, now you know what it is. I mean, I'm very inspired by this work. I would like one of my songs to be the national anthem. Ooh. Is kind of what I'm going for here. Well, we don't have Flop Tropica, but we do have a Discord. We do. So before getting into the new music of the week, we would just like to give a shout out to the Discord and our Patreon Legends Only fans for supporting the pod, self-produced, independent podcast. She sure is. Every week through any sort of share remixes that may be <laughs> blasting through the windows. We've made it through a lot. We sure have. We've made it through pandemic, crickets, chromatica ball cancellation. COVID twice yep. for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've made it through a lot. We have. And you guys have kept us going. You really have. So thank you to everyone who's joined us. If you would like to join us on the Discord and to listen to all of our bonus content, including the after show where we talk about things after the, the show, show, you can head on over to patreon.com slash legends. legends. Only. Only. and as always thank you so much for the reviews across all platforms give us five stars on apple Podcasts and spotify it really yeah. helps us algorithmically now we've got even more that you can support this week oh my god as we head into the new music of the week very exciting they have been supporting they have been supporting hello Literally, you're charting yeah she's charting she's charting she's charting literally <laughs> Well, why don't you let everybody know what that is? Oh my god, you guys, I have a song out! (laughs) It's out, it's finally out. My first debut remix is out on all streaming platforms, and there is a music video. Are you in it? No. Oh, okay. It's not me. (laughs) It's like a rework of the original music video, and it's like color theme. I love it. I got purple, it's such a slay. Yeah, so my new single, Traces of You, the T. Kyle remix, is out now. Bop. Bop, 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 bop. I'm fucking shook. And you guys got it to number nine on the U.S. iTunes dance chart. It broke into the top ten. Which is difficult to get. Not everybody has that. It's true. Well, I don't have it anymore. It already flopped off the charts, but it's fine. Okay, but it was there. I am so shook. I love it. It's out. It's real. It's major. 
people are loving it. And yes, the response has pushed you up to the charts, which is so fucking cool. It's wild. Yeah. When it was creeping in like the 20s, I was like rattled because I was like, oh my God, I literally was bracing. Like I had well, all my drafts ready. Who are you up against? Everyone in the dance charts. Exactly. And who did you almost come across and beat? <laughs> BB Rexa. <Yeah. laughs> So, like, I had all these drafts planned. I thought it was going to land, like, maybe, like, in the 200s or, like, 300s. And I had all my, like, Melissa Gorga memes and Heidi crying outside. (laughs) And, like, everything was drafted to be, like, funny and then, like, a flop, you know? Mm -hmm. But then it crept into the top 20. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And then it crept into the top 15. And it was literally sandwiched in between John Summit, Where You Are, and Avicii, The Knights. And that's when I lost it. I was like sobbing. I was like, this is real. Oh my God. And then it cracked into the top 10. Oh my God, I can't. Well, we're going to talk even more about it. Speaking of the after show, yeah. in the after show. We'll get into it in the after show. We're going to get into the, crying, yeah. And I don't want to cry hey, well, now. Yeah. <laughs> cry later. Laugh well, now. Well, I want to thank later. everyone seriously though, because I really did not expect that. Like genuinely, I thought it was going to like kind of flop. Not, not like in a... Not like trying to bash myself. Mm-hmm. I just didn't, I like di- literally didn't expect it to go like top 10 on iTunes. Like that's insane. It's so cool. Because I don't have, you know, I don't have anything out. This is my first one. Well, you, you know what I mean, right? It's just the beginning. I'm not being self-deprecating. I just like, I you were literally just, had uh, no expectations yeah, of A pleasant surprise. Do. Yeah. And motivation. And it's on Steve Aoki's label. Like, oh yeah. my God. Uh, we'll get into it in the after show. Yeah. But I do want to thank everyone for streaming it, supporting it, sharing it on your Instagram stories, tweeting about it. Minos made like a really funny meme collection Mm -hmm. of it. And yeah, I just want to say thank you because it really means a lot to me. We love. I'm shook. Well, speaking of EDM, you also have some picks from the genre. I do. So KX5's new self-titled album is out. Mm -hmm. I actually still have to listen to it because I was- You were busy charting. I was in a whirlwind yesterday. I just was like, because I, I was trying to respond to everyone, and I. Well, I can fill you in actually. <gasps> a, just a little hint: they left off the men as far as the ones that are already released. So it's like, all right, but it's still great. Yeah, it's just the leftovers were the men tracks. So it was oh. like, oh, it's no escape. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Also, apparently, they call themselves K Five. Oh. I was watching like one of their interviews. And uh, they just said, call it K5. Again, why? what is it with the X? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that makes it easier to search because like K- just K5 is like not SEO friendly as much. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. In any case, yes, they're out. They're here yeah. now. I need to plan like a, do you ever do this with new albums where you plan like a moment? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I need to plan that moment still, but. You just need to feel this moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also out is. Ella Henderson and Regard with a track No Sleep, mm. which is an interpolation and a sample. Oh. Trance is back, baby. It's back, whether you like it or not. Yep. <laughs> From Calvin to Regard. Mm-hmm. She's here now. And I have a theory about that. About trance? Yeah. What is your theory? I think that because of the TikTokification of music mm. and how everything has been sped up to yeah. like a 140 BPM that people were like back into trance and because that genre is in that BPM. Yeah. And I feel like it's made people come back to these old samples and these Mm. old tracks. And I don't know. I'm just guessing. Nightcore. Yeah. The nightcore sped up. I, yeah, I can see that for sure. My own theory is that because we're in the middle of a recession that we've reverted to dance pop again. Thank God. Yeah. That too. The last time we had one big crash, it bore us Lady Gaga. So Maybe we'll have, you know, somebody else rise or just a lot more trance in pop. I'm fine with either. Don't love the recession, but No, it's <laughs> gonna be bad. Don't love that part of it. But we're dancing. Are we like are we in it right now? I think so. Okay. Or I don't know. We don't talk about finance on this pod, obviously, because we would never. But <laughs> yeah. It's either uh on on the brink of much worse or like we're going through it. I, I'm not sure. Got it. But something's happening. Things the are last really expensive. Refresh- yeah. The last recession gave us superficial. Right. So like, is it that bad? Mm. You know, it's kind of <laughs> it worth <is>. it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh. It's very Vanessa Hutchins. It's like, yeah, oh. there's a recession, but Heidi Montag. That stuff has been happening on social media this week too, of people finding all of the like three years ago yeah. moments well, we're of like now, imagine and we now have that period of time like crystallized of the stupid love into <laughs> free fall into imagine Vanessa Hudgens' response. Like now, these are classics. Yeah. They're classics of the pandemic beginning. No, it's a classic of the <laughs> pandemic beginning. Oh my god, what is it called? Okay, I'm looking that one up. Yeah. Yeah. God, the live streams. We all lost our minds. We, we really we had nothing better well, to do. Arguably just... still losing it. Yeah. It's never been found. But classics from the vaults. Well, I have some picks as well. Shout out this was a big hit on the Discord, by the way. Shout out to Tori Kelly's return with Missing You. A whole different vibe for her. We're we're getting like some dance moment from her in the video. And it's very 90s, early 2000s. Missy TLC. Missy TLC. JoJo. The original JoJo, for the record. Um, it's very nostalgic. So we've got the return of Tori Kelly. We also have the continued return of... Not that she's ever left for longer than six months. I fucking didn't. Miss Lana Del Rey. Oh, damn. <laughs> When she's not being outperformed by Jasper, she has a new song out called The Grants. And there's this like two minute intro that unfortunately has already been ruined in my mind because somebody tweeted the intro to Lana's The Grants and it's the Westboro Baptist Church singing God no. Hates. <laughs> I So that's been ruined for me. However, lovely song. And I just love that these songs are really dynamic and different compared to she was hitting a samey streak of things. And now I think she's trying some new sounds, some new getting a little bit of beat in the songs. American horror certainly has some interesting sounds going on. Massive attack at the end kind of vibe. So I'm really looking forward to this album. When does uh, it drop? I want to say March 24th, although it might've been delayed or something. Oh, cause the girls keep sh- shifting i know i feel like ellie was supposed ellie, to drop next week yeah. and i can't keep up maybe they maybe they know something we don't oh or they're just tacking on new tracks i don't know but it is coming uh, did you know there's a tunnel under ocean boulevard the shortened <laughs> version <laughs> so we're excited for that we're also going to give a big shout out to miss allison goldfrapp who is here with the first official single from the album called the Love Invention is the name of the album. Ooh. And the single is quite horny. <laughs> <laughs> it's called So Hard, So Hot. So Hot. And, uh, you know, I'll just say this is maybe an indication of a potential album of the year standout. Oh. Who's to say? I don't know. I won't say much more, but uh, keep an eye out for Miss Goldfrapp. I like the visual. Yes. And the little, I admittedly haven't gotten into this yet, but mm. the teaser she posted, yep. I was like, ooh. I'm just going to say, uh, definitely watch out for this album. Oh, I'm, where I'm perched. She's going electronic. She, yeah, well, she certainly oh, has. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah. But even more floor club collaboration ooh. vibe. So I'm just going to say, get excited about this one. Coming in May. Also, shout out, okay, so we talked about this, and I forget if we mentioned this, but Eurovision is coming, and Rina Sawayama was rumored to be the UK girl for months. She was teasing it, and then she isn't. She really was teasing it, too. It was almost, like, very straightforward, too. Like, it was like... It would be silly if it wasn't her. Yeah. And now it's not. It's not. No. Interesting. But she does have a movie to to promote, John Wick 4. Keanu. Gotcha. And she's fierce in it. Like, it's like, she's gonna beat that bitch up. So, she's thriving in that department. Meanwhile, we do have the pick. It's called I Wrote a Song by Mae Muller. And it's a bop, I will say. I'm not mad at this. I have been listening to it. And all of the 37 countries are now submitted. We, of course, have Laureen's tattoo, which (gasps) is about to eat devour. I cannot wait. It's so good. It's so good. Do we think she's going to win? I Strong chance? Strong chance. Strong chance. But you never know with country politics and all of that, how it's going to work. But yeah, because since she's already had her win, you might have people being like, she's had her win. 
Mm-hmm. We'll see. But I really do like this UK entry. So we'll see how it goes. We also have some bops on the horizon. We do have a lot coming up. Oh, and uh, by the way, everyone, we will be taking off from the pod next week. A one-week hiatus. Yes, we're taking a one-week hiatus. You know, a lot of, obviously, you guys have been following the journey. A lot has been going on. So we're taking a little pause, you know, a little moment. But we will be back after that for, it'll be April. My yeah. Gosh. And it's not an April Fool's joke. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back for April Fool's. Literally, right? Joke's on us. Yeah. I'm seeing a show on April Fool's, actually. That's what you think. <laughs> Right, show up and it's just empty. Um, no, so we will be taking a little week off. We okay. think it's important, you know, recharge. It's important to do. But there are a lot of things coming up. That's right. Miss Kim has been, I, I don't know if TikTok's just calling me the F word or if there's some payola involved, but I have seen every single gay lip syncing to the Kim Petrus alone sample. Yep. Every other TikTok that I flipped Everyone through. Everyone's talking about it. Kim is coming with a sample slash interpolation of the classic Alice DJ club cut, Better Off Alone, which certain legends have already. Lindsay, we were talking about it before. She was ahead of her time with this. She had, she had Xanax, Xanax. Again, ahead of her time. A slowed down slow down reverb version Very of cool. better off alone would have been a tiktok smash yeah because now everyone's doing that like slowing things down and it never came out she did an instagram teaser she just of leaked it. it on her instagram story like two <sighs> minutes of it but we do have kim's version and the gays are foaming at the mouth and we'll we'll see how that drops now she's also teased sort of bluntly that miss Nicki minaj is involved as well Hmm. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, she's teasing a lot. She played like five songs on her live from her album. I think, obviously, Unholy has probably changed the opinions at the label. They're probably like full steam ahead. Like, yeah. Let's get this shit out. All of a sudden. Clear that sample. Yeah. <laughs> We're here now. So we'll see. Coming soon. Better Off Alone by Kim Petras. Well, she's not the only one sampling it. She certainly isn't. Because did you hear the new track, Crying on the Dance Floor, by Sam Felt and Jonas Blue? Yes. Better Off Alone. You know, there's a little Better Off Alone for everyone. Mm-hmm. I'm a little shook by how much it's all being referenced, but well, may the best Better Off Alone win. <laughs> <laughs> and Interpolation Nation is thriving right now, because that's not even the only one happening. Rita Ora, we're interpolating you. Well, you're interpolating Fat Boy Slim. Yep. Praise you, that song you all know and love from mm, early O's. Yeah. Yeah. I have to praise you like I should. <laughs> that one. She's bringing that. She's praising you. Yep. This actually sounds good. It does sound good. And she was kind of ahead of her time with Crazy Frog, that you uh-huh. know, interpolation. Which that, that, this is like so, there's so like many layers to this. The bling bling interpolation of bang bang is also dropping next week officially. Oh. That's another thing. That's, that's a happening. lot of layers. Yeah. Well, we do have that coming and we're very excited. Ava Max is just sitting back being like, a lot of these girls are my daughters. Yeah. <laughs> interpolation queen. I think it's going to be a sample heavy year. It certainly will be. Definitely sample for the summer. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, at a Don't interpolate point, your mother. <laughs> you do run out of like boops and bops to. Yeah. You know, there's only 12 keys. There's only 12 keys. And <laughs> there's only 12 club c- cuts to sample. It's true. Yeah, we're there. And no now. one wants to get sued. No. So. Just going to bring it back from the back, you know, catalog. And uh, there we go. Speaking of. What should I interpolate? The back catalog, oh, what should you interpolate? I don't know. I have to play every. Maybe I'll do it in the after show as like you know, give the girls an exclusive. Well, I keep shouting out this song, but I would love nobody's actually done it. Like Ellie's references it in an indirect way, and the Kim Petras song also says "Castles in the Sky." I would love a "Castles in the Sky" reference, like the melody of the song. Ian Van Dahl. Okay, I'm gonna write this down. I would love that. I've been practicing, so we're taking the vocal. Doom, 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 doom. 
Bing, 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 bing. Uh huh. That's how I make melodies. Well, I sing to myself and then I try to match the. Anyway, no, it's that's how you do it. <laughs> Finally, if you guys went through my voice memos. Like <laughs> you and find Taylor the Swift. note, find the note, girl. <laughs> I was walking by someone the other day, and it was um, they had a speaker out, mm-hmm. and they were playing um, that Bad Bunny song, and. I started singing a Timbaland beat under it, like mumbling it to myself and recorded it in. I was like, the idea. Bad Bunny remix is coming. Finally, a little niche for me, but no less important. Miss Danny Minogue, the People's Minogue, is doing a homage, a retrospective, an anniversary of one of my top 10 albums of all time, Neon Nights. It's turning 20. It did turn 20 this month. She's doing something. She already has an email. Subscribe here. I'm guessing a repackage of sorts. I'm ready to buy every part of this. I'm very eager. If you've never listened to Danny's Neon Nights, I highly recommend it. You will enhance your life. You will get your life. It's very important. And it is a classic Minogue album. So, highly recommend. Hot off the Sydney Pride press. (laughs) Sydney Pride stage, rather. In any case... We've got things to look forward to. We've got LGBTs to knock off the roof <laughs> next door. <laughs> and plenty more in the after show. It would honestly be so funny if someone there was a listener. Oh, it's going to be so funny it's- if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> All they did was complain about you the whole time. It, it's loud. <laughs> let's be real. It's it's, it's noticeable. A, it's a, it's a <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to head on over to the... After Show Lounge, which is Interior unfortunately lounge. also located across from the party. <laughs> <laughs> so you can head on over to the After Show if you're a Patreon Legends only fan. Otherwise, thank you for joining us. And until next time. Thank you again for everyone who has streamed, bought, shared my song. I very much appreciate it. It's the first and hopefully not the last. And we're going to get into that in the after show now we sure will the making of (laughs) (laughs) and until next time we will see you soon